Hello and welcome back to my channel. When this channel was first created, my intention was to make only Android videos, but as a programmer, you should try to learn as much languages as you can. Never be comfortable only learning one language. Swift was actually the first programming language I started to learn, then JavaScript, then Java. These languages are somewhat similar. I promise you that after I'm finished with this app, I will make the corresponding app in Android and probably JavaScript. Now, in my country, there is this lottery called Super Lotto. I don't play the lottery anymore, but I always had a hard time choosing the numbers. The truth is that lottery numbers are always chosen at random, so I thought this app would be great in helping us to choose random numbers rather than scratch our heads. Let's get started by creating a new Xcode project. Choose single view application and give your project a name. We are going to leave the three checkboxes using core data, include unit tests and include UI tests unchecked. We are also going to leave the option for source code unchecked as well. Sketch was used to create the assets for this project. Sketch is free to download and use for a month. It's easier to use than Photoshop and Illustrator, but they can be used as well. Open the folder with the assets and drag them into the assets folder and then open the main storyboard. We will build the user interface first and then work on our code. Search for an image view in the bottom right hand corner. This region is called the object library. Drag the image view to the screen. Using the handles, stretch the image view to cover the entire screen. From the align menu, choose horizontally in container and vertically in container. Next, add four constraints. Zero from the top, zero from the bottom, zero from the trailing, and zero from the leading. Go to the Utilities pane and click on the Attributes Inspector and choose Background for our image. Run the app and check to see if everything is where it is supposed to be. We will need another image view to hold the logo, so it's going to be the same process as before. The only difference is that we will use a different image. We want to make sure that we center this logo horizontally in our view. Also, from our pin menu, we will pin the logo 40 pixels from the top, 110 pixels from the leading edge, 110 pixels from the trailing edge. Now let's run our app and see how it works. Search for a label in the object library. Drag that label onto our view. Type the words Super Lotto into the label. This is the name of a Barbadian lottery. Don't worry, I will show you how to adapt this app to suit the lottery in your country. You can customize the font to suit your needs. I chose Helvetica New with a font size of 40. With the view selected, Hit Command and Equal, and this resizes the label to fit the text. Now let's center the label horizontally in the view and add some constraints. We are going to pin the label 50 pixels from the bottom of the image view, 80 pixels from the leading edge of the super view, and 80 pixels from the trailing edge of the super view. At this point, you should test and run your app to see if everything is in place. The numbers that we are going to randomly generate are going to be placed inside of labels. There will be six labels, five labels for the regular numbers and one label for the power ball. 
The only difference between the label for the regular numbers and the Powerball is that the regular numbers will have black text and the Powerball will have red text. Also, I chose Helvetica New as the font and 30 for the font size. Remember, you can hold command and equals to set the size of the label to exactly fit the text. In the Utilities pane, go to the Size Inspector and set the size of the labels to 35 by 35. An easy way to copy the labels is to hold down the Option key or Alt and drag. We want these labels to be aligned and evenly spaced. So we need to place all of them in a stack view. First, select all of the labels and then click on the icon that says Embed in a stack. Align the stack view horizontally in the container. Add constraints and give it a fixed height and set the distance to the bottom of the view as 325 pixels. Select the stack view in the document outline pane and hold down control and drag to the super view. I call it the super view because it is holding everything. We want to select equal widths. This is going to stretch the stack view so that it is the same width as the super view. Alternatively, you could have set it to be any width using the pin menu. Head over to the Utilities pane and in the Attributes Inspector, in the Distribution field, select Fill Equally and add a spacing of about 10 pixels. I forgot to align the text to the center in the labels, so I will do that now. At this point, you should test the app to see how it runs. By the way, I also forgot to change the text for the Powerball. The last part of this user interface requires a button. In the object library, search for a button and drag it to the screen. Change the font, the font size, and change text to generate. Resize the button to fit the text by hitting command and equal. You can also change the button text, color, and background to your liking. Test and run your app. This brings us to the end of our user interface. Now let's link up the code to these labels and button. We're going to hide the utilities pane and the object library and open the assistant editor. Control and drag from your labels right below the class de declaration in the view controller. We are creating an IB outlet and the IB stands for interface builder. This allows us to change the appearance of a UI element. We will need six of these outlets. Name the first label, first number with no spaces and written in camel case. Name the second label, second number and also write that in camel case. Continue the pattern up to the fifth label but for the sixth label, name it Powerball. For each label, the type remains UI label and the storage option is set to weak. Buttons can have actions or outlets. We're going to control and drag from the generate button to the bottom of our class. 
The connection this time is going to be an action. Name it generate random numbers and leave the other settings at default. There is something that I would like to show you really quick in case you make a mistake. Let's say that you made a typo. Simply deleting the code doesn't remove the connection from the button. What you have to do is right click on the view in the document outline and where it says referencing outlets, click the X to remove the association. Then you can delete your code. Get rid of the assistant editor and open the view controller file. Import game kit because we will need to shuffle the elements in an array. In the super lotto, the regular balls are numbered 1 to 35. We can create an array to hold these numbers. It will be an array of integers ranging from 1 to 35. The power ball ranges from 1 to 10. We can create an array to hold these numbers, but you will learn later that this is not necessary. Create an empty array to hold the shuffled lotter lottery balls and create a variable to store the generated power ball. Create a function to generate the random numbers and update the views. Let's declare this function under the connection that we made to the generate button. We will call it in view did load and whenever the generate button is pressed. Let's call the function generate winning numbers. Let's write the first line of code. Set shuffled lottery balls to gk random source dot shared random dot array by shuffling objects and pass in lottery balls. This gives an error. Cannot assign value of type any to type in. Click the fix button and the error goes away. On the second line, set the text of the first number by using first number dot text to the first element of the shuffled array. Test and run your app to see if it works. Make sure you call this function and generate random numbers. When the button is pressed, we are shuffling the numbers in lottery balls and adding them to shuffle numbers and displaying the first element of the shuffle array, which is at index zero. Set second number to the second item of the array, which will be at index 1. Set third number to the third item of the array, which will be at index 2. Set fourth number to the fourth item of the array, which will be at index 3. Set fifth number to the fifth item of the array, which will be at index 4. Run the app to make sure that everything is working. For the Powerball, we are going to use another Swift built-in function to generate a random number. We didn't use this function with the regular numbers because it would repeat numbers. In the Super Lotto, the numbers do not repeat except for the Powerball. The name of this function is Art4RandomUniform. 
it takes an integer and returns a random number between 0 and the integer minus 1 and all of this is inclusive. For example, if we use 10, it would generate a random number between 0 and 9 inclusive. So we will have to add 1 to the generated result. When you are finished, run the app and then buy yourself a lottery ticket. However, this app doesn't guarantee that you will win anything. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you would like to see me build this app for Android, please subscribe to my channel. Thank you for watching and enjoy the rest of your day.